I'm Nathan Tuffy, Livestock Reporter from the Farmers' Journal. Today we're here in Gorey County, Wexford, on Cahill Crane's farm. Cahill is a participant in the Chagask Irish Farmers' Journal Better Farm programme. We're also joined by Adam Woods, who is Better Farm Advisor here in the area as well. Adam, you might just talk us through uh, what the Better Farm programme is about and what you've achieved over the last couple of years here on the farm. OK, Nathan. There's 16 farms basically picked throughout the country. Uh, they are varying soil types, varying farming types, and just, I would say, from small to big farms or whatever. As part of the three-year programme, we drew up a three-year farm plan. And if you were to summarise three things in that farm plan, the three most important things, number one is output. And every one of the farms has to increase stocking rate and increase the number of kilos produced per hectare in order to generate more profit from the farm. Number two is grassland management. Every one of the farms has a massive potential there to increase the grassland management skills to get more out of grass, to get more gain off grass, and hence reduce the variable costs to so increase their profit. And the third thing probably is breeding. From calving interval to increasing the genetic potential of stock, to uh, buying in new stock bulls like Cahill has done here, to, to making uh, more use of ICBF's herd plus in terms of culling cows and increasing the quality of the cows. And those three things coupled with uh, focuses on animal health and focuses on financial end of things to keep financial end of things running smoothly throughout the year. All those things to come together as part of that three year farm plan so we can hit the target of a thousand euros gross margin per hectare by the end of the three years. We're just going to have a quick walk around the farm and we'll look at what changes he's made in terms of grassland management, uh, breeding management and change in farming system. So Cahill, just give us a brief outline of where the farm was back in 2000, at the end of 2008 when you entered the programme and where you've brought it to at this stage. In uh, the end of 2008 we were, uh, had about 65 or 66 uh, suckler cows here and uh, we were doing um, beef, bullocks, bringing them to beef and heifers to beef and uh, finishing the heifers out of the house and, uh, and the bullocks out of the house as well. What are the key development changes that you've put in place here on the farm? Um, with the like of the grassland management there, uh, we put in more paddocks and for the like of the bull system, we went to a, a day paddocks. Uh, uh, have your paddock size on the farm are roughly around one hectare and then subdividing then uh, allocating uh, a day's amount of grass for the bulls. Um, We've also done uh, receding on the farm there. We bought uh, some land there in 08 and uh, we got the opportunity there last year actually to uh, do some uh, drainage work on it and uh, receded it. What's the plan from now on? When are these bulls going to be finished? These bulls, depending on their weight, ideally they'd be around 520 kilos to go in onto an ad-lib system. So probably around mid-June um, they'll, they'll go indoors and they'll spend maybe 80, 90, 100 days indoors. Uh, and be f built up to about 12.5 kilos of ration a day. They'll be on a small amount of straw as well for roughage, and then they'll be killed out of the shed, we'll say, come September time. Hopefully, uh, around 700, 720 kilos, we'll be aiming for a 400 kilo, 420 kilo carcass at that stage. Adam, as regards uh, calving index and calving spread, what are the key targets you've set for the farm here over the last two and a half years? Right, Nathan, when we started off here in 2009, I suppose there was a number of things we had to look at before we started off on the breeding plan. Cahill was calving cows here for nine months of the year, which probably wasn't ideal. So we had to condense that back into three months. And that takes a long time, and it's a prolonged sort of a process. And if somebody tries to do that in one year, you're going to have a lot of culls and a lot of empty cows. So that has to be part of a three-year plan going forward. Next year we'll be calving cows December, January, February and March. The heifers will calve in December to make, just give them that little bit extra longer to go back and calf again. Um, in terms of calving interval, we're around 375 days there at the moment, which is a little bit off our target. Our target set for the last year of the programme is 365 days. So that means every cow in the herd has calved in 12 months. So it's 365 day calving interval, a three month calving spread, and a 0.95 of a calf per cow per year. I think Cahill's running around 0 0.89, 0 0.9 at the moment. So again, we're a little bit off the target, but we should be able to hit that. That means that we're allowing for a 5% mortality rate which is we built into that 2.5% at Calvin and 2.5% at 28 days. So that's the couple of targets we set, and they're the very same targets for every better farm in the programme. Carl, how have you changed your, the, the breeding policy of the herd in the last two and a half years? When I was increasing the cow numbers there, um, I was in time to be buying a, a half limousine cross freezing cow, and I was trying to bring home a cow that was good enough so I could breed replacements from her as well. 
and in the process I also went out and bought uh, a five star limousine bull with a lot of milk fast home so that I could bring down the next generation of replacements and now at the moment I have uh, replacement calves on the ground which I hope to make cows from. Cahill, grassland management, I know we've talked about it before, it's key to keeping good live weight gains on cattle. What do you intend to do with this paddock? This paddock is going to be probably getting taken out as well. It's just gone a bit too strong there now over the last few days and as you can see there's some of us starting to shoot a bit there. What was your reason for cutting off this field? In the rotation we were gone uh, 21 days ahead on the measurement of the grass and we felt that uh, the grass was gone too strong. So we cut 15 acres of grass here, took it off it and it's to get the rotation back and to get the new grasses coming back and have it at the right stage. We're back, we were back now on to 15 days ahead. And is that that's what you're looking for at this stage of the year? Or? Well, it is a couple of days uh, too far ahead, but we have another couple of paddocks which we're going to take out now when we do the main crop silage. Only we've just been on the safe side uh, in case the weather come dry, which has had to be dry here for the last few weeks. Yeah. So we're going to make another decision now in the next couple of days to take out another paddock. Adam, can you talk me through the significance of getting phosphorus and potash levels right in the soil? Yeah, Nathan, when we soil sample a field, uh, the soil sample can be either at index 1, 2, 3 or 4, in terms of soil P index, at, ex at index 1, the, f the field won't grow to its potential at all. So we need to build that level up to index 3, which is a nice level to be at. At index 4, there's a little bit of wastage going on there if you, if you spread P on an index 4 soil. So index 3 is a, is a nice place to be at in terms of maximum potential in the field. For a farmer that has index 1 soil, uh, what are the benefits to bring it up to index 3? In terms of density of swords and in terms of maximum growth out of that sward. We're finding on paddocks at index 1 or 2 they're not growing enough grass and when we compare them with index 3 and 4 paddocks. So it's very important to get that index right. Today we've seen what Carl has done on his farm since he joined the Better Farm programme in relation to grassland management, breeding management and how he's changed his farming system.